Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Today I wanted to talk through some of the different workspaces that we have and uh, go deeper in depth into one of the workspaces that we probably don't use all that often. Um, particularly when we think that we're doing CNC programming and that doesn't seem like it have a lot of use for us. So we'll take a look at what that workspace does and how we can actually use it in the CNC programming world. And the workspace that I'm talking about is the patch workspace. So what I'd like to start out doing is just drawing a line. Um, I'm just going to make kind of an angled line. Now we should always define and uh, constrain our sketches for this demonstration purpose. I'm not going to. I'm going to stop the sketch and I'm going to come up and I'm going to try to extrude that line. And you can see Fusion won't even let me try to select that line. And the reason is it's not a closed boundary and everything in the model workspace needs to be a closed boundary. So I'm going to hit cancel. And I'm going to switch my workspace and we're going to go take a look at the patch workspace. When I get in the patch workspace, now uh, we get a different set of commands and everything that we're going to make in the patch workspace is going to create surface bodies. So from the create menu, I'm going to choose this time to, to extrude. I'm going to grab that line. Now you can see it's selectable. And when I extrude the line out, uh, you see what we get is just a planar surface. So this is a zero thickness surface that we've created. You'll also notice that there's a, uh, a front side and a back side to these planes. So one's going to be colored gray and the other one is going to be more of a yellow type color. Should you ever want to flip which side is the front or back side or normal side as it's referred to, you can go to the modify menu and you can choose to reverse a normal. So if I click on that, now when I click on that surface and click OK, you can see the yellow side is now up as opposed to being down like it was before. Um, so other examples, let's just draw one more shape. I'm going to sketch a circle. I'm going to put it on this plane, drag it out, stop the sketch. And now when I create an extrude, grab those edges, click OK. Again, you can see we have a surface, a zero thickness body uh, with a normal and a backside that we could flip if we wanted to. I use I use the patch workspace for a few different cases. I'll link to a couple videos that I've made where uh, I've used the patch to do a few things. One's a sheet metal video and the other one's for uh, doing some kind of fake emboss emboss text. So take a look at the cards for those and uh, review, the, review those. For our example, I wanna take a look and see how the patch environment can help us for CNC programming. So I have a file ready to go over here that we're gonna take a look at. So here we are in the model workspace. Everything is pretty set up with this. Um, some, of the, some of the things we need to know about this file is that on the original setup, the first setup, I don't plan to drill any of these holes. I plan to flip this part over and drill the holes in from the backside. So I'd rather Fusion not even uh, recognize these in the first operation. I have some different methods I could go about doing this. I could duplicate the body and delete the holes off there and program that and make some copies. But what I want to do is I want to try and use the patch workspace to be able to go and plug those holes up. So let's go ahead and uh, switch over to the cam workspace for a minute and take a look at what our tool paths are looking right now and see what our goals are. If I switch over to the cam workspace, you can see I've already created a setup. I've called this not patched. And I start out, if we click on this, you can see what the setup looks like. So the, the stock is slightly larger than what the part is. And we want to go through and machine that away. So the first operation is going to be a facing operation that removes all the material. We'll look at a simulation in this in a minute. The second one is one of the first issues that I'm having, and this is an adaptive. And what, what I, the issue that I'm talking about, this again is going to show up a little bit better in the simulation, is that Fusion is trying to take the three quarter inch bullnose end mill that I'm using and, and jam it into these holes where it can make it fit. And I'd rather it not do that. Uh, there's a horizontal operation that comes and cleans up the floors a contour that cleans up the walls for those inside pockets, a contour that cleans up the center bore and the outside profile, and then our second problem tool path. When I click on the parallel operation, you can see what's happening is the tool path is going across this face, and because it's able to fit into this hole, it's dropping down, coming back across, and trying to machine uh, places of this that I'd rather that ball mill not go. So let's take a look at how we can kind of fix that. And where we're going to go to do that is we're going to switch from the cam environment to the patch environment. Uh, patch workspace, I should call it. 
And we have two different types of patches we're going to make. I should say the geometry for the patches that we're going to do. All the 10 holes that I have on here, if we look at this from the front, that you can see that this is a planar edge. So there's no curvature to this. It's just angled. And so those patches are going to be pretty easy to do. The other patches we're going to do, the top surface is on a curve. And Fusion seems to have a little bit of problem with this. And we're going to take a look at an easy way to get around that to create your patches. So I'm going to switch over to a isometric view. And I'm going to go and start creating some of my patches. So I'm going to go to the Create menu and choose to do a patch. And I'm going to select this edge. Now the idea with patch is that it's expecting a single boundary. So I can't go through and select each one of these holes going across there or else Fusion is going to try to make a boundary out of them and it's because they're not connected in any way, it's not going to be able to do that. So unfortunately when we're making these, we're going to have to do patch, enter, patch, enter, patch, enter. So I'm going to add that patch and click OK. And a little shortcut we can do is to right click and say repeat patch. And I'm just going to go and select these different edges. And I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, so there you can see we have all those holes patched up. And uh, now what we'd like to work on is patching up these two pockets and the center bore going through this part. When I go and do the same thing again, choose the create and patch, and I grab these edges, I'm gonna choose a curvature of, uh, I'm gonna say G0 for this. In the description of this video is going to be a couple links that you can click on that were uh, some articles made by my friend Paul Mumford and he does a really good job of explaining the differences between G0, G1, and G2. And you can take a look at those and understand the better differences of what those are. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK to create that patch. And when we look at it, everything looks pretty good. But if I look at this from the front for a second, you can see this patch surface is kind of bubbling up above the original surface. Another little check we could do for this is we could go to the inspect menu and choose the zebra analysis and I'm going to choose the body in the patch. And when I click OK, the idea behind the zebra analysis is that we want that to flow smoothly across the surfaces so we can clearly see the zebra stripes are not lining up in any way, shape, or form, uh, letting us know that we've got some issues. So I'm just going to expand this out. I'm going to right click on this and I'll just delete it since I don't want it for right now. I'm going to find that last surface that I created in the timeline and I'm going to delete that and now we're right back to where we were. So how do we fix this? The easiest way that I found to fix this is to make another surface. So I'm going to create a different type of surface called an offset surface. I'm going to choose the offset and click on this face and you can see by the blue arrow we can offset that surface a certain amount and what I want to do is I want to leave that distance exactly at zero. I'm going to create a duplicate of that face as a surface. So click OK Let's go up to the bodies and turn off our main body and you can see what we what we have is we've just created a surface that's exactly like that top surface, just no thickness to it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go do that same patch again. So I'm going to choose patch. Uh, I'm going to set my curvature to G2 and I'm going to grab that edge and click OK. Right click and repeat that. Click OK. Right click and repeat that one more time and click OK. Now, if we run that zebra analysis one more time, clicking on our three surfaces, or four surfaces, you'll see that the zebra stripes look pretty good. They're not 100% perfect, but for the purpose of what we're doing in the cam environment, they're going to be well within the tolerance that we need to create some nice smooth surfaces. So there you can see uh, we now have nice smooth patch surfaces that are going to cap off those areas that we don't want the tools to go into. Go ahead and we can turn our analysis off and uh, I'll go over to the turn. I'm sorry. I want to turn one more body on and then we'll switch over to the cam workspace. I'm going to right click on my not patched body and tell it I'd like to generate the tool path. This is going to take a minute. So we'll be back once this tool path calculation is done. Okay, we're back. The tool paths have all calculated. Let's take a look at our two problem adaptive, uh, a two problem tool paths, the adaptive and the parallel. If I click on the adaptive, 
you can see the toolpaths are still trying to penetrate through that surface. And uh, the same with the parallel, you can see it's a little hard to see. Let's uh, expand out the setup and we'll go to the bodies and we'll turn off all the patch surfaces in this setup that we've created. So we'll leave that one on. Okay, so now it'll be easier to see when we click on that parallel that that tool is still dropping in. What we have to do inside of Fusion is tell Fusion in the CAM environment that it has to respect those patches. So I'm gonna come over to the, the another file that I duplicated. I created a setup inside of this called patched. And with this, I went through those tool paths and I did uh, the magic that makes that happen. If you guys want to know how do you make Fusion honor service patches, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to go through and make a video to do this. The main purpose of this video is to show you how to create patches uh, to uh, be able to be used later on. So not the focus on cam, but the focus on actually creating the patches. Let's simulate this operation. I'm gonna turn my main uh, design off. I'm gonna turn my stock on. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and let this go as quickly as it can. So there's our adaptive roughing, goes across. And if I slow this down now, you can see that no longer is are the, the ball mill toolpaths trying to lift up for those holes. It's just smoothly going across those surfaces. Go ahead and close that. We'll turn this back on and let's look a look at that parallel. Here you can clearly see the parallel is no longer dipping down. If we look at the adaptive, the adaptive is no longer trying to get into those holes. So again, the way we can do that is creating the patch surface and hopefully you learned how to get around some issues that the patch surfaces may have when creating them on solid bodies when their edges have a curve to them. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, I would be great if you could give this a thumbs up and uh, if you found this helpful please go ahead and subscribe and we'll talk to you guys later